Hey everybody, this is a continuation on the discovery in the electric universe theory where our sun is being powered by an external source. Um, that external source being the Orion Nebula trapezium area, which is our central sun. Um, if you haven't checked out the previous videos in this series, I recommend that you do that, otherwise you might be missing a lot of stuff because this is not going to be comprehensive, um, but it's just going to be a continuation. Uh, the purpose of this video is going to tie uh, some esoteric texts that we see regarding the uh, Kabbalah Tree of Life uh, and understanding of the macrocosm, which is our cosmos, versus us, uh, the man himself, which is the microcosm. Um, and we're going to see why they all tie together. The very top here is uh, kind of a rehash. It says the true sun is the heart of our solar system and its brain is hidden behind the visible sun. Occult philosophy defines the visible sun simply as a glowing sphere, the real sun hidden behind that. The invisible sun is the storehouse of our little cosmos, self-generating its vital fluid and ever receiving as much as it gives out. From that sensation is radiated into every nerve center of the great body, and waves of its life essence flow into each artery and vein. The planets are its limbs and pulses. This is from the secret doctrine. And what we found is that the secret, doctors in, secret doctrine is in alignment with the electric universe theory. We're going to take a look at the Zohar. We're going to take a look at the Kabbalah a little bit more today. And we're going to kind of see how everything ties together. Um, and we're going to see why this tree of life, it's going to start making more sense to you uh, why the body is placed on top of it like this. Um, so let's take a look real quick. This area that you see right up here, we just spoke of our sun being the heart of our solar world system. You can see that corresponds to this guy right here. And with the human body on top of it, we can see that that fits right in the heart area. The, uh, the other planets that you see surrounding the sun, you can see that there's connections that go from our sun to each one of these planets. And there's a connection that goes from up here which is our central sun down to our sun and then from our sun we can see it branches out to all these different planets. So this area right here it actually controls our sun. It controls the power to our sun and it provides the source of power to the sun and in turn our sun acts like the heart of the system and then pulses out to all the planets that we see in our solar system. So this is the brain spoken of and uh, so the sun is in between matter and what we call spirit and this area up here is the mediator between what we call God and man right up here. This is why all of this uh, tree of life stuff it's going to make a lot more sense to you. If you notice right up here this picture uh, the pyramid that you see right here this is obtained from and if you see the red circle behind it uh, you can see the geometry that fits the red circle uh, and the pyramid and everything and then the air shafts um, because this area represents the uh, the central sun and if you'll notice the yellow triangle that you see right here uh, represents that uh, starting area where everything occurred and the pinch that we find uh, in the Birkeland current that get, runs up into M42 we have these Birkeland currents that run up into M42 and there's a pinch right in between the trapezium stars there and uh, and so we're going to see now how all this kind of ties in with the Kabbalah Tree of Life and how the Kabbalah Tree of Life is also in agreement with the Electric Universe Theory. So we have the Secret Doctrine, but we also want to show the, the Kabbalah Tree of Life as well. Show you the terminology and show you the descriptions and, and you're going to see how it all kind of ties together. So this particular document here is just it notes copied from uh, the secret doctrine in various places on the internet, um, from actually the Zohar or from, I mean actually from real bona fide texts, not just from blogs or stuff like that. So it says this is from the secret doctrine here, and it says when I framed Adam Cadman, the Elohim are made to say the spirit of the eternal shot out of his body like a sheet of lightning that radiated at once on the billows of seven millions of skies and my ten splendors were his limbs. The 
Sephiroth of the upper triad, Kether is the crown, and is represented by the brow. The brow is the same as what we call the pineal gland. So Kether, the crown, is represented by the brow of the macro, macro prosopis. Well, let's take a look at this again. So this is Kether. And this represents the brow. And that's why we see, when we put the pyramid on top of this and everything, why the king's chamber fits right on top of the pineal gland. And this right here grabs the, uh, or the subchamber grabs the, the uh, spinal cord as it comes down. So this area right here, this represents the brow. This is the crown. It's the pineal gland. And that's the same as what we see right here on this Orion Nebula. Let me show you something real quick. We take a look at the human brain, and this was, remember, derived from what we uh, got from uh, Michelangelo. He gave us the clue on this. And what we see is when we put the human brain on top of this, the brow of the brain, which is the pineal gland area, uh, sits right behind the thalamus. And if you notice that yellow triangle right here, that is the area which represents the area of the pineal gland, and that represents Kether. And that's also the area where the pinch is that we see, uh, which is inside the trapezium of the Orion Nebula. That's where this, apparently, this a plasmoid or some kind of a pinch is there, and that's where you see the Birkeland currents leading up to where that brightest spot is the area of the uh, the pineal gland, which is located right where those trapezium stars are. And if you see where the brain is, it's right where the pineal gland is. Now, the Jesuit priest that uh, claimed that he created the uh, whole Big Bang Theory that we see right here, he called it his primeval atom, or the cosmic egg. He called it his hypothesis. But really, in reality, the cosmic egg hypothesis has been around um, since ancient times. But you can see how he's twisted it here. He, saw, he calls it the primeval atom, and he spells it A-T-O-M. And, and then the cosmic egg that he calls it. So this actually should be the primeval atom as an A-D-M or A-D-A-M, because what we're really talking about is the atom cadman. Now, the cosmic egg is what we're going to see. That represents the head So right here from the stanza in the uh, Secret Doctrine, we see that darkness radiate lights, radiates light, and light drops one solitary ray into the mother deep. The ray shoots through the virgin egg. The ray causes the eternal egg to thrill and drop the non-eternal germ which condenses into the world egg. So this egg is the head. Right here it says, take for instance the opening sentences in the various cosmogenies. In every case, it's either a circle, an egg, or a head. Okay, so this, this ray that shoots through the virgin egg is the first spark of electricity that shoots through the head. And what we see right here, they are all connected with the primeval wisdom, which flows out of the precosmic source of all, symbolized by the head the circle, the egg, and they all have an identical meaning and relate to the primordial archetypal man, the Adam Cadman, the creation of all things. So what we saw right here when I framed the Adam Cadman, the spirit of uh, the eternal shot out of his body like a sheet of lightning. And that's what we see when we take a look at the egg here, the virgin egg and the ray. So what we have is we have this area of the cosmos which is called the egg, and that represents the head, and that represents the area that you see right here. All of the waters that we see right here, which form the shape of the head. And then we had some initial kind of spark that occurred. How it happened, I'm not really sure, but some kind of initial spark occurred according to the secret doctrine. And then lightning shot out of the Adam Cadman's body like a sheet of lightning. She, now, so that means the egg corresponds to the Adam Cadman because the egg corresponds to the head and that corresponds to the Adam Cadman, the creative origin of all things. 
In Kabbalistic philosophy, he is termed the heavenly man, the Adam Kadman, the Merkava, the chariot. So what is Adam Kadman? What is the area of the body? See, he's the head, remember. Well, in the healing, the divine art of Manly Hall, and see it says Adam Kadman, the Merkava, the chariot. The brain is the Merkava, or chariot. And so the Adam Kadman is indeed this area right here. So when this was formed, an initial spark went into this area and lightning shot out of it, which is actually what they're being what they're talking about right now. This is the actual central sun. And so the word that was created, the word, uh, and actually what we see in uh, uh, Hermes Trismegistus and the, uh, the Pymander, they talk about the word, it beats out space and creates caverns in space. Uh, the word, and it's, it's like this whirlwind, which is this plasmoid, I believe, that sits right in between the uh, trapezium stars. But this is the Adam Cadman that we see right here. This is the head of everything. So it says the brain is the Merkava, or chariot, of the pineal gland. And that's why, when we take a look at this right here, that the waters that we see around this triangular area represent the brain, and this triangular area represents the pineal gland. And we know that that pinch is actually located right here between the trapezium stars, right where the pineal gland is located. The first and highest part of the tree they called Kether corresponds to the pineal gland. Thus the whole tree within the crown of uh, Kether in Principia, likewise the whole body and the whole life of man is within the magnetic field of the pineal gland, the light radiating from which is the crown. Why do they say that? They say that because because our sun, for example, is powered by the Adam Cadman, which is the central sun. And so when they say the life of man actually radiates from the pineal gland, because, for example, if we were to look at this uh, on a cosmos scale, if this right here s ceased, then the power to the sun would cease and all the power to the planets would cease so everything radiates from this area right here and accordingly uh, the same thing does on man on a microcosmic level so that's why they're mentioning it that way so it says here that the whole tree um, so the first and highest part of the tree they called Kether, and it corresponds to the pineal gland. Now this is from the Ladder of Lights, this is from Kabbalah here, and it says that Sephira, Kether, the crown, world of expression, prima mobile nebula. So this was uh, in 1975 by, uh, God, I forget his name, uh, Gray is his last name, but he mentions the nebula, the treetop at last, or at the very apex of the middle pillar which we can make no further progress on the tree of life unless we leave it all together to nothing above or fall back to Malkuth and start all over again. Kether not only signifies the crown in a regal sense but also the summit of any height especially a mountain or a pillar and so he's saying this is the middle pillar right here the very summit of that which represents the nebula so he's in alignment with with Kabbalah as far as that goes This right here is from the Zohar. It says, Who hideth himself in the waters and maketh the clouds his chariot. Remember, the chariot is the brain. So he hides himself in the waters right here. The chariot is his brain, and those are the clouds. Who hideth himself in the waters and maketh the clouds his chariot. This is actually from the macroprosopus. Macroprosopus is another word for kether, which represents the area of the uh, brain, the pineal gland. And it, it, is, it is the brain of the most holy ancient one, and that brain is expanded on every side. And when this head, which is concealed in the head of the ancient one, which is not known, extendeth a certain frontal formation, which is formed for brilliance, then flasheth forth the lightning of his brain. So, it's saying that lightning flashes forth from the brain. 
and that is what we actually see up here creating stars and everything and this is from another area the third whiteness radiateth and shineth and descendeth and descendeth and goeth forth from the part enclosed in the brain so imagine the cosmos we have this radiate with this it radiates from this area in the cosmos from the part enclosed in the brain and it darteth forth its rays to the seventh middle light and it formeth a path what forms paths lightning does to the inferior brain and formeth a path to the inferior and all the inferior lights are thereby ignited so it's showing that it forms a path from here down to the inferior lights and all the other ones are ignited because of this one here that supplies the cosmic electricity and then it is mentioned as the holy eye, the excellent eye, the eye of providence. And what is the eye of providence? This is the eye of providence, which is the same thing as the eye of Osiris, which is the same thing as the Logos, which is the same thing as Kether, the eye of Kether. Now this is some interesting things I found out about Saturn. First of all, it might be interesting for you to know this. This is from Isis Unveiled. Like the pagan Saturn, who had his castle of flame in the seventh heaven, the Jewish Jehovah had his castle of fire over the seventh heavens. And then it begins to talk about the um, invisible sun, which is actually the Jehovah. You can see the similarities between what we see here um, and what we actually see in the Orion Nebula. This area representing Kether represents the pineal gland of the uh, Adam Cadman. It represents the area which lightning comes forth and lights all the lower, uh, all the lower sephiroth or all the lower spheres and planets and suns and so forth. And then it says the appearance of the Ophanum was the color in a barrel, but that of Hath was like the coals of burning fire. Amidst them were fiery flames, glittering and scintillating like sparks, referring to the Holy Spirit, from whom they all emanate, and by that shine, as it is further written, and the living creatures went and returned as the appearance of flashing lightning. These Ophanum formed the wheels of the heavenly Merkaba or chariot which is the brain, which is the Orion Nebula. And this is interesting right here. The light emanating from this mansion is perceived by angels extending to the star Sabbathai or Saturn. So they mentioned it in the Zohar as being a star. So it once was a star or what have you. But the light coming from the Adam Cadman apparently extended to Saturn. Now here's where we get into an understanding of the Kabbalah Tree of Life. Remember we've seen that the Adam Cadman shot forth lightning. So check this out. There's a certain depiction of the Tree of Life that they use which I showed you right here and it's going to make a little bit more sense to you now uh, as far as the electric universe theory. The Kabbalists tell us that the Sephiroth, and by the way, the Sephiroth, in case you don't know what they are, these are all Sephiroth right here. Okay. Were emanated by means of a flaming sword or lightning flash, which descended from Kether onto Malkuth. Okay, so the lightning flash, which descended from Kether all the way down to Malkuth, which is Earth. They showed his head at the top of the tree, which is what we see on the Orion Nebula, and the path leading from Kether to Chokmah, which is in turn the first path of the flaming sword. And this is what we see right here. Now remember the serpent is also what we see um, as Kundalini, and Kundalini is also what we see as cosmic electricity. Each Sephiroth is considered to be an emanation of divine energy 
often described as the divine light, which ever flows from the unmest, unmanifested, from the unmanifest through Kether into manifestation. The flow of this light is indicated by the lightning flash shown on diagrams of the Sephirothic tree, which passes through each Sephira in turn according to their enumerations. So, you see the lightning flash that we have right here going all the way down this tree? So this is Kether, and this represents the trapezium of the Orion Nebula. It represents the, the area where things started. If you see, the lightning comes from up here. So this is the first ray of spark coming in, and it, it illuminates the egg, or it causes the egg to thrill, like we saw in the stanza of the uh, um, Secret Doctrine. So this is the, actually the Adam Cadman up here. And so this is where everything starts from, and the lightning flashes all the way that down through the tree. That's what they're trying to show with this particular thing right here. And uh, I think that's about all I want to show you in this particular video. But I wanted to show you that the Kabbalistic tree of life has a very particular meaning and it is, it is associated with the Adam Cadman, Kether, which represents the first area of all this light, which everything shot forth as far as lightning goes, that we see in the Zohar, uh, and the Kabbalistic Tree of Life, which shows us that our sun right here is just a reflection of the energy that it gets from up here, because this up here, the sun of the, is the heart of the solar world system, and its brain is hidden behind the visible sun. The sensation is radiated into every nerve center of the great body, and the waves of life essence flow into each artery and vein. The planets are its limbs and pulses. So everything starts from up here. Now, if you notice what you see right here, you see God the Father up here, and you see the... Uh, uh, the red sun behind it. This represents the area of the central sun. And the triangle that you see right here in the air shafts, uh, it's trying to show you that this is the same as what we see right here. This represents the pineal gland. It represents Kether. And if we take a look at the pyramid that we see in these cathedrals, This, for example, um, is showing us the same thing that we see in this guy who completely misinterpreted the Big Bang Theory. This guy right here, you can thank for giving us the Big Bang Theory, and he misinterpreted it. I mean, he called it the primeval atom, uh, which should be A-D-A-M, because it represents the head of the atom Cadman, which is the same form as what we see as man. And the cosmic egg actually represents the head uh, what's actually spoken of, the difference between what we see here uh, and what we see on uh, our solar world system is our cosmos is our solar world system. We have many of these types of things. In our system, the head of our system is the Orion Nebula, and it supplies the power to the sun. And what he's talking about here it doesn't have anything to do with electricity. And the primeval atom and he's called it right here, should be 80 a.m. I think it's a twist on words to confuse people personally, but if you look at the right here, you call it the singularity, and you can see how the cause he's got the cosmos expanding. Well, if we take a look at this right here, this is actually the head of the Adam Cadman, and if we take a look at the pyramid itself. Right here it says, the Egyptian pyramid also symbolically represents the idea of the mundane tree. Its apex is the mystic link between heaven and earth and stands for the root, while the base represents the spreading branches extending the four cardinal points of the universe of matter. It conveys the idea that all things had in their origin and spirit, evolution having, evolution having originally begun from above, proceeding downward. Well, that's what we see right here, and this is what the pyramid is. And as we saw in the Ladder of Lights, the apex of the Pyramid of Creation is the nebula. And then what we see is that the geometry 
that you see down here where the subchamber represents your root. Right here you have your heart and right here you have the brain. Um, but in a larger sense the brain actually fits right in the pyramid because it's kind of a fractal thing going on. But that's what we see right here in these cathedrals as well. So we have spirit coming down which represents the uh, this initial ray that apparently uh, impregnates the uh, cosmos that we see. So we have the initial ray coming down through Kether, excites Kether, and then all of the, the sheets of lightning come out through this area and they extend as Birkeland currents, galactic Birkeland currents all the way down to our solar system, the sun, and, uh, and into Earth and the planets of our solar system. So I hope that kind of ties together the Kabbalah tree of life, the understanding of the uh, the lightning flash that we see moving from uh, the brain area down through our solar system, the connection points that we see between uh, up here, the sun, and all the planets of the solar system, and the body that we see on top of it. This uh, is basically the the way that the Kabbalistic tree of life should be understood in an esoteric sense. So you guys take care and I'll talk to you soon.